let's make an introduction to decision trees. A decision tree is simply a series of yes or no questions that we ask to our input data, and we build the tree out of that. In this section, I will use a simple data set, and we will fit a decision tree on this data set. Here is my data. I have this x1 and x2 numerical features, and I have this target of y, which can be class 1 or class 2. So we will make a classification here. On the left, you see our tree, and let's explain this tree structure. And by the way, don't worry, we will build this tree from scratch. I'm just showing you the full tree to give you the overall structure of the tree. When we look at this tree, we see that we have these rectangles here. So those are called nodes in this tree. And overall, we will have two types of nodes here. These ones are called split nodes. So we will ask questions in these nodes, and we will split our data points into these two subsets, being yes and no. And yes and no are the answers to our question. And over here, for example, when we first build this tree, at this root node, we will have all the data points, and we will ask this question, x2 less than or equal to 5. The data points that say yes, they will go to left, and the ones that say no, they will go to right. And over here, we have another question, x1 less than or equal to 4.5. This time, we will ask this question on this subset. So that will only consider this subset that already came from the first question. Overall, we will grow our tree with these questions. Let's talk about this second type of nodes this time. When we make our split, as a next thing, we will look at the class distribution in those. If we see that our data points belong to a single class, it means that we already classify them. So it's good news. We are going to call those leaf nodes. Here you see four leaf nodes, class 1 and class 2. Let's explain this process using some visuals. And as I said, we will build this tree from scratch. Here's our data set. I have these orange data points from class 1 and blue data points from class 2. Let's build these trees from scratch together. In this process, we will ask multiple questions. So you may be wondering what type of questions we are asking here, or how do we select our questions? So those are some good questions to ask. What type of questions we are asking? We are just going to consider one feature at a time, and then we will try to select this optimum threshold for that, or optimum condition for that. And how do we select these conditions? That's also a great question. We will try to find the conditions that will best separate our data points into, the, into their corresponding classes. For example, if I have a question that will just give me pure results at the end, one subset is class 1, other subset is class 2, that's the perfect result. Most of the time, we won't get this perfect result. In this case, we need to measure how pure these child nodes are. I will explain this concept in detail in the next se section. We will mathematically get some numbers. And overall, we will select the split conditions that will give us the purest child nodes at the end. So let's assume that I have these optimum conditions in this tree. And my first question is x2 less than or equal to 5. So that question in this plot will be this straight line. And I will have the yes and no subsets. So let's go through these. The, the data points that say yes to this question will be these data points. And the ones they say no, they will be these data points. As a next step, I will look at the class distributions. Let's start with the top. Here I see just single class. So that's good news. I can just classify those as my class 2 and that will become a leaf node. For the other ones, I see a mixed result here. I see one data point from class 2 and the rest is class 1. It means that I need to ask some more questions here to clarify things. So here's my second question, x1 less than or equal to 4.5. Similarly, I will split my data points into these yes and no subsets here. Over here, as you see, I'm only considering this part of the data because this part is already classified. So we will have this yes and no subsets here. On the left, we have yes. On the right, we have no. Over here, when I look at the class distributions, I see that this is again pure. I will call this a leaf node. This is mixed. I will ask one more question here. Here's a question. And with this question, I can get these uh, data points classified correctly. And overall, this is our decision tree. 
here you will also see some decision areas for example here we have this blue area we have these orange areas here and we have another blue area here so this is also nice because we can see visually how our predictions are going to look like if we were to have some different data points for example if i were to have a data point here with the x1 equal to 2 and x2 equal to 6 here it looks like that would be a class 2 result from this tree so it's really nice to have these type of visuals as i said we can make some type of predictions with our tree let's assume i have this data point here with the x1 equal to 2 and x2 is 4 i can simply go through my decision tree i can just follow the path here and it looks like class 1 here i would also get the same result if i were to look at this visualization here and similarly i can have a data point outside of my data set so i had the this one already in my data set but let's assume I have a different data point let's say a test data set right in this case I will again follow the the path in the tree and overall this will give me the class and this one is also class one and this is how we built a simple decision tree traditionally these decisions that I show you are done on a single feature but there are many different variations but for the sake of simplicity we will just stick with this single questions or single features at a time and we learn these models greedily. As I said, we look at the purity in the child nodes and we will select these conditions that will maximize some type of purity in these child nodes. I will explain this in the next section. Overall, we usually like to have some stop conditions on these trees because trees are usually well known for overfitting. So for example, you may see some things like we will stop when we reach a maximum depth or when we reach a maximum number of leaves or when we have too few data points in the particular leaf or when, when a certain leaf has met some desired level of purity. In the next section we will talk about how to calculate these purities and we will dive deeper into this purity impurity idea.